I think for me it was more about um, experiencing the whole thing as a whole and not um, just picking it up in Australia. We've always been a bit adventurous uh, and if we're coming over here to sail the Med for you know, a period of time, we don't know how long yet, um, we might as well experience the whole um, process from start to finish and um, it's, it's been good doing yeah. that. Yeah, a cu couple of things for me, I think. Um, uh, one was the price. I think that it was an it, it was an influence, but we had decided um, at one of the boat shows that if we were going to do this cruising thing, uh, instead of cruising the east coast of Australia, uh, it would be nice to cruise another part of the world. So, um, price, pick it up here in La Rochelle, yeah. shoot down to the Mediterranean, and journey back home the long way we just thought it sounded like a good idea at the time and so far so good in the end uh, when we crossed over from power boating to sailing catamarans um, we did some serious research from boat show to boat show and over the course of maybe three maybe three boat shows three years uh, I took a very long list. I, I cut that list down to three types. They were Fontaine Peugeot, Lagoon, and Leopard. I cut that list of three to two, simply on um, finish of product. So we were then tossing up between the Lagoon and uh, this, the Fontaine Peugeot. And in the end, uh, I don't know whether Marie, Marita agrees with me, but I actually think, um, the finish of the product for me, got this one over the line, and um, this new model. Um, Ant rang me six months prior to the release of this model when we were looking at the Lapari, and at that stage we were tossing up between a Lapari and a Helia, we didn't know which boat would suit us best. Ant rang me one day, I think it was six months out before release, and said look if you are getting close to the point of purchase, which we were, and he knew we were building up to something. Um, he said, you might like to wait for a little bit because we've got a, a, a release coming up. Couldn't tell us a whole lot about the boat, but he, he said, well, you might want to put your decision on hold until you see our, our new release. When we saw the new release, it, it, it just came down to the volume of this boat versus anything else on the market finish of the product. Yeah, and, and in actual fact we didn't see the boat when we bought it. We bought it off the plan, off the 80 centimetre model, um, but Michael saw it there in the glass case and thought, yeah, that looks fantastic. And basically it's modelled off um, the Helia in a lot of ways and we liked the, the flow of the Helia, so um, we took a leap of faith on the Lucia 40 and um, when we went to see it finally at the Paris Boat Show about five or six months after we had um, signed up for one, we were really pleased with what we saw. Well, I finished work two Fridays ago and... Um, <laughs> In actual fact, you resigned today. Today's my resignation day. Marita's my last day of work officially is day. today. Congratulations, honey. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> you can cut that if you like. Um, in terms of plans, um, our intention all along, I think, well, mixed intention because we've always been very structured in our life, was to deliberately not be structured about um, this trip and therefore our plans are extremely loose. So at this stage, um, pretty much all we've got planned is that we sail out of La Rochelle when we feel ready to do that and we head south. Um, the intention is to go down to the Mediterranean and float around there um, for an unspecified period of time. Uh, maybe, we do a, have, maybe a season or two or, yeah. or when they kick us yeah. out. We have a, we have a um, rendezvous in um, Innsbruck, Austria at Christmas time to meet up with um, some family members that are coming over to have Christmas with us. Can't sail there so we'll have to fly We're there. We're going to have to get there by other means and um, that's our plan at this stage but ultimately um, we'd love to bring Let's Dance back to Sydney um, and um, that will involve an Atlantic crossing and through the Panama Canal across the Pacific Ocean at some stage and into Sydney Harbour and I think that will be um, quite a momentous um, occasion, occasion as well time. because you know Sydney Harbour is it's a very special place so. The 
look, it's been fantastic. Um, you definitely have to come here um, open-minded and with a flexible approach, not only to uh, time, but to um, the details of everything. Um, but it's been really great. Um, Multi-hole solutions um, have facilitated all of the um, tricky things um, because obviously the language barrier is fairly significant in La Rochelle, or can be, um, but Nod um, has got great relationships with all of the people that we need to be dealing with, and um, all of the processes have gone very smoothly, um, even you know, um, some details of shopping and things like that that um, you know, you're know you obviously trying to buy things that not the average tourist would be looking for in a shop, so it, it gets tricky, but it's part of the fun, it's definitely part of the fun, and um, you know, you've got multiple solutions and not um, providing uh, really great support in that whole process. So I, I think I can sum that up by, I don't think I would come over here and do this on my own. I think if you tried to pick your own boat up, look, you, you could do it, there's no doubt about that, but having Nod here for the last two weeks or week and a half, whatever it's been, has been, you know, like, you get things done, it just happens. Um, uh, just just the littlest things, going shopping for tools, um, getting the Fontaine Peugeot guys here, getting Uchi Mata here. Uh, on your own, I think that would be 10 times harder. Mm. Having someone that you can go to and say, look, um, this needs doing, it's, it's been fantastic. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do it any other way. Uh, regardless of whether this is boat number one or boat number seven, I think you'd be in my opinion, mad not to have someone here to help you out doing it. And Uchi Mutter have been fantastic. Yep. Pierre, Pierre's done a fantastic yep. job with us. But I, all, but I think that's because of the relationship that um, uh, multi-hole solutions, or, or perhaps Nod himself, has created created over the years with Pierre. Um, we, I feel now that we've got a really good relationship with Pierre. Mm -hmm. Nod flies out tomorrow, and I have. Yeah. No issues with sitting down with Pierre in the, at the beginning of the day and saying, right up here, what do we have to do today? So yeah. I think it's been invaluable having you guys and you too, Rach. Yeah. You've been good fun. Yeah. Um, I think it's, yeah, it's invaluable having you guys here, no doubt. He has been outstanding. And we are so happy that he, he and you were both here <laughs> as part of that whole process because it's been so much fun. Yeah, I mean, Nod obviously has a good relationship with the French guys and, and gets things done and that, that's kind of what we've got used to dealing with him, he gets things done. I feel very safe in his hands. He's looking after our best interests. Well, we can't really offer advice about the actual voyage itself because we haven't done it yet. But I, I think generally you, want, you don't want to you don't have too many unreal expectations. You want to have plenty of time. You know, be flexible in your timing. You know, it could be issues with stuff getting finished or the warranty claim or just the weather being bad for a week or two. You know, don't, don't have a schedule. You have plenty of time. And um, do your homework first. There's a lot of, lot of homework on where to go down the coast, how to do things. But also, if you're enjoying something, then stay and enjoy it. Don't rush off to the next destination, just because it might be your very last time that you're ever in that place. So just stay and enjoy and just relish every minute that you have in every destination that you get to. Yeah, be flexible.